I think it's terrible. You want to know the truth? I think it's a disgrace. What's going on in this country, I think it's a disgrace. And when you look at that, and you see that, and so many other things, what's going on, uh, a lot of people should be ashamed of themselves, and much worse than that. As they have cherry-picked information from the FISA application, they've also cherry-picked information from Mr. McCabe, including information he provided to us about the genesis of the investigation, uh, which um, did not involve the dossier. The only area that I am familiar with uh, that uh, we, we left out uh, would be the, the history of Carter Page. Uh, I explained why we left this out to the director of the FBI. The director of the FBI is well aware of my concerns about Mr. Page. Well, a lot of focus on the memo released today, declassified, and the allegations of FISA abuse. Uh, top at Senate and House Democrats have issued a letter uh, to the president saying, quote, we are alarmed by reports that you may intend to use this misleading document as a pretext to fire Deputy Attorney General Rod Rosenstein in an effort to corruptly influence or impede Special Counsel Bob Mueller's investigation. We write to inform you that we would consider such an unwarranted action as an attempt to obstruct justice in the Russia investigation Firing Rod Rosenstein, DOJ leadership, or Bob Mueller could result in a constitutional crisis of the kind not seen since the Saturday Night Massacre. Reference to Watergate there. Uh, what about all of this today? Let's bring in our panel. Byron York, Chief Political Correspondent of the Washington Examiner. Susan Page, Washington Bureau Chief at USA Today. And Matt Schlapp, Contributor with The Hill. Byron. Uh, well, the first thing, on the memo itself, there are two really big points, which is that, one, it said that the memo was an essential part of this effort to get a wiretap warrant on Carter Page, and two, it said that Andrew McCabe, the number two at the FBI, uh, said that without the dossier, there wouldn't have been a warrant. Now, so, one clarification. It, it's, it's not a quote in, the, in that part, and I asked Nunes about that. Correct. He said that there is a process to put out the transcript. Right of McCabe, and they would have to go through that to get the transcript put out. But he says it was an integral part and that the FBI led with the dossier in the FISA applications. And there's also the possibility that somebody else who was in a position to know also said that without the dossier, there wouldn't have been a, uh, a, an application. So, I mean, those are two really, really big things. And, and on the other hand, then you look at what you've got now in the dossier, and then you look at what the FBI, the Justice Department, and Democrats have been saying in the last few days, that this would be an assault on the rule of law, that it would, would reveal uh, America American intelligence sources and methods, and you ask, does it really do that? And I think the answer is no. Susan. You know, it's interesting. I, I agree. The question about whether they could not have gotten a FISA warrant without the dossier, I think that's a, an important point. It's one that's under dispute between the two parties. It's a knowable fact about whether he said that or not. And so I'm hoping that we will know what he actually said before the committee and what the truth was on that. But I actually think the most important thing about this, uh, this uh, report out today is whether it is, in fact, used for additional purposes. For instance, the president's tweet this morning, the president's comments that you just aired indicate that he would like to fire some people as a result of this. And if he does that, that seems to me it could be extremely consequential. Yeah. Um, Matt, l listen, the, the hyperbole on both sides has at times gone off the deep end. Um, leading up to this, some congressmen were piping this up as the moment of, uh, you know, the biggest thing. Others were, too, uh, commentators and others. Um, on the Democratic side, they, they were so concerned about sources and methods and what this would do to the institution. But where's the ground truth here? So uh, what is it, Brett? Is it going to destroy our national security uh, if this document is released? And then the document is released, and it's called a nothing burger. There's nothing in it. It's not very important. I think the Democrats who have been critical of Devin Nunes need to pick a lane. And I think it's important. I think you're right. There has been hyperbole. And the one thing I would say, Brett, is this is not the breaking this is not going to break the back of those folks who used the federal government to try to go after a political opponent. This is one step. We're going to learn more. And I think it's very important to take a breath and to take a step back and say, because a lot of conservatives don't like FISA. They don't like the government having this kind of authority. They don't like the government spying on Americans. Are we OK with one administration using these powers to go after their political opponents? I think that is very scary. But there were two uh, Trump-appointed deputy attorneys general right. that continued the FISA surveillance. 
No, that's exactly right. And what I, does that tell you? I think it tells you that uh, uh, they might, uh, the current one might have some uh, job security issues, number one. And uh, I'm, I, I'm, I'm willing to give them the benefit of the doubt. But if you read the FISA memo, um, it is alarming that this was so, this was done clearly to advantage the Democrats and Hillary Clinton. Why would they want to continue it? And there's a couple of things. That and even the Russians said Carter Page was an idiot. They didn't even want to use him as a spy. A couple of things that jump out. Memo number one graphic, September 2016, Christopher Steele admitted to then Associate Deputy Attorney General Bruce Orr, who his wife worked for Fusion GPS, uh, who put this all together, his feelings against then candidate Trump when Steele said, quote, he was definitely desperate that Donald Trump not get elected and was passionate about him not being president. All right. Uh, I think that part, his personal animus uh, toward Trump is less important than the fact that the, the dossier was actually an oppo research product funded uh, by the Democrats. But I, I do think maybe the most, one of the most beneficial effects we are seeing right now is that the release of this memo has created a lot of momentum for the release of more stuff. Now, we, what did McCabe tell the committee? We want to see the McCabe interview. What's really in the FISA application? We want to see that, too. So I, I think that's a good thing, that we, and what's in the Democrats' letter. We need to see more rather Re than less. Quickly, Susan, overlooked, I think, in that end of that interview, um, Nunes said, more is coming. There will be more other coming, memos. Yeah. This is That's phase right. one, just focused on FISA. And two, there are rumblings up on Capitol Hill that there will be an official call for another special counsel. Yeah. You know, w but to Matt's point, I think what's interesting is not the partisan divide on this, which is predictable. It's the divide within the Trump administration between the FBI and the Justice Department on one side and the White House on the other side on whether it was proper to release this report. And that does not have the partisan tinge uh, that, the, that the divide between Democrats and Republicans have.